Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and this is the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 26th of January to the 2nd of February 2019. I'm here with Georgia by my side, off camera, but I'll tilt it a minute. She's hiding the mirror I use for reflection from the window so I get a bit of light on my face. Georgia, how are you doing? Are you doing well? Anyway, Georgia and I were speaking about this week's transits and we both agreed that there's so much magic in the air this week that we need to summon it. And maybe that's the first message I want to give you towards this week. Every week we talk about celestial transits here, things astrologically happening in the, uh, between the, the spheres in the sky that affect us all. And let me just fix this, yeah. Oh, Joy, you're enjoying yourself, aren't you? Um, and there's a lot of magic in this week, isn't there, Georgia? And Georgia told me something very beautiful. Ask people to summon magic into their lives, to actually have the intention to allow magic to flow into your lives. Over this time, over this week, there's a lot of quintiles in the sky. An important one between Mercury and Mars as well. And so, what kind of time are we coming to? And what kind of time are we coming from? We're coming from this uh, trine between Mars, the planet of energy, and Jupiter, the planet of expansion. The great benefactor that happened on the 25th and is still going to be felt throughout this coming week. It's a lot of energy in the air, it's a better connection to our initiative, to our um, um, vitality, energy to walk forward, to actually take action in our life in a swifter way, in an easier manner, in a lighter kind of atmosphere with this Jupiterian shrine. And to truly expand how we do things and upgrade it as well with all this Uranian energy coming in this week. It's about allowing ourselves to grow and it could be also a happy time, it could be a very, as I said, time that is full of zest and vitality and a lot of carnal uh, um, energy as well as this Mars is being heightened by that Jupiter. So, great time for intimacy and uh, sensuality and sexuality. You have to be careful not to be over-sexual. <laughs> um, so, basically this week, there's a lot of Aquarian energy coming in. Mercury stepped into Aquarius. And Mercury is not just our communication, not just our thoughts and our ideas. It's actually the way we navigate through life, the decisions we make to move from one place to another, the logic that stands behind that mechanism of navigation in our lives. So Mercury is a very important planet because it also is in charge of our interaction within our surroundings with other people in our lives. The part we take in our larger families, neighborhoods, and, 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 and social construct of things around us. When Mercury steps into Aquarius, it asks for an upgrade. This is a time that we could be heading into breakthroughs. Um, the height of that mercurial, revolutionary um, atmosphere is on the 29th or the 30th, depending on where you are over the globe, around the globe. When the Sun and Mercury are going to be conjunct in what uh, uh, the ancients have called a superior conjunction, a Kazemi. This is a great time for a visualization and a ceremony and some focus on how you would like your life to upgrade. Your ideologies, your words, the way you interact with other people and navigate through your life. How are all of these in requirement for an upgrade? This is a time that we could be actually thinking outside the box in innovative genius manners and breaking patterns 
allowing ourselves to be flexible and try things we've never tried before, only to reach breakthroughs, only to understand that there are more efficient ways to do things that we've been struggling with for so long. So yes, summon magic into your lives, summon change into your lives, and make a conscious effort this week to think about how to better your life. This is not a stable time. Don't ask for stability. But it is a much easier energy coming in and flowing with this Uranian energy. <coughs> um, because there's a lot of sextiles in the sky. There's a sextile this week uh, on the 31st between Saturn and Neptune. And Saturn is in charge of everything that is materialistic in a sense of the real. What we need, the basics that we need to survive continually and stably here, to do things as they need to be done so they can withstand the trials of time. So there's a very realistic approach there. Sextiling Neptune, that has nothing to do with, space, with this space and time. It is about the amorphic, it is about the complete, the holistic, the universal, the godlike, Everything that we cannot really touch and quantify and, and grasp with our logical brain. It's our emotion and inspiration, our subconscious, and things that, and the great mystery in a sense. When these two planets sextile, there's a beautiful connection that can uh, be created in your lives between the mind and the heart between the real and the surreal, between the fantastic and the dreamlike, and the rails upon which your life and this earth move on. This is a time that those rails can be inspired to change their tracks. That we can understand that there are ways of integrating the fantastic into daily life. Together with who? Together with other people in your group, says Uranus. Venus does as well. You need other, and a sextile to me is a Venusian aspect. So both of these energies say we need other people in our lives right now. We need to join people who feel and act to promote similar ideas and projects, to work together to actually achieve those dreams in the real. It is about taking comfort with others and gathering strength. Other than that, there could be a lot of intensity coming in. When we are required to change, when we are required to upgrade, when we are in need to walk forward in our lives, when we make a conscious effort to do so, we could be challenged. But we're going to have the energy, if we need to, harness it to actually have the gas to go over that mountain peak, over that challenge, triumphant to the other side. We just have to be careful not to hurt ourselves or other people in the process because this is a very intense energy coming in. I'm talking about the square between Mars and Pluto. It's going to be exact on Saturday the 2nd, the end of this week, on the 21st degrees of Aries and the 21st degrees of Capricorn. And that square gives us the strength in a sense to actually find the inner strength, the inner energy to push ourselves through. This is the kind of energy that says I'm going to break this barrier whether I need to drive my head through the wall to go through it. And this is what I say, why I say you need to be careful not to hurt yourself or other people in the process, because this could be a cruel energy, an unrelenting energy that doesn't look out for the long-term effects, that is very driven from a very emotional place, but not from a necessarily wise place. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a 
an energy that could make us too cruel or vengeful or dramatic over things that really do not deserve that attention in our relationships, in our lives. So do watch out for these energies. Do watch out for your reactions. We can get out of control with this kind of energy. It can get intense for us and then we could snap. And if we don't want to get there, if we don't want to get there, this is a time that could be devoted to psychological introspection over our actions, over our motives, over our desires and what drives the tail of them, in a sense. What's, what's actually driving the strain? What's pushing it outside into our lives? And just when this week is over, we're heading to a trine between Venus, the planet of relationship, satisfaction, value and self-value, and Uranus, the innovator, the rebellious. And that's actually a beautiful time that you could integrate change into your relationships. You could meet new people, you could meet new groups, you could find new jobs or new ways to make money or create value. This is a time of integration, innovation, and an upgrade. Don't look for stability right now, but allow yourselves to be as flexible as possible, to truly step where you've never stepped before, to smell that smell of a new ground, to bring back a spark to places that are stale in your life. Don't do the same thing and accept different outcomes. And as I said, there's a lot of magic in this week. Summon it. Mercury is going to quintal Uranus in the end of this week. And this is actually a time that not only breakthroughs or innovations can come. If you are creative, if you do anything with writing, if you do anything with art, if you do anything that needs a birthing of something new, you could have a very beautiful... Um, prolific and, and, and uh, how do you say, fertile time. So summon it and work consciously to bring it. And how does all of these transits work through the week? So on the 26th, Saturday, sensitive day, good day to enjoy yourselves with food, drinks, and just indulgence. But in other ways, it could be a little too sensitive. And make sure that your own self-doubt or self-scrutiny doesn't cause you, cause you to overindulge. Watch out for aggression, especially on noontime. And remember, I'm talking in Central European time. If you are in the States, take it nine hours before. If you are in the Pacific, take it nine hours ahead. Um, the 27th Sunday. There's an energy that is a bit too hectic for me for a Sunday. Things can change really fast, but Mercury is also quintile Mars, and that is magic, folks. That is magic. So our actions and the way we navigate things through our lives can merge in a very magical way. On the 28th, beautiful day. The moon is in uh, Scorpio, but there's a sextile to uh, Saturn and a trine to Neptune. A lot of gentle energy over that day. Just don't allow yourself to be overdramatic because of that moon. On the 29th, the moon moves to lighter, more optimistic Sagittarius. It's a great day to take a more feminine, lighter, and, and um, just a more artistic, spiritual approach to things. And communication with loved ones. Do watch out for communication with loved ones on the 29th. It leads us to this Kazemi. Uh, Mercury is going to conjunct the sun in 9 degrees Aquarius, 55 minutes. So look if you have any planets there or on the same degrees of Leo, Scorpio uh, or Taurus. See if you're more affected by this uh, occurrence. And both the 29th and the 30th are great 
times for focusing, visualizing, making a ceremony, thinking of how you want your life to be upgraded, how you want yourself and your surroundings to be upgraded, teaming up with other people, meeting new people, and, 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 and really allowing yourself to step forward. Uh, it's a beautiful day for communication, the 30th. It's just a wonderful uh, atmosphere altogether. The only thing is that the evening is much more sensitive. So it's a bit lethargic as well. So take it easy in the evening. Thursday, the 31st, basically optimistic energy all around with the moon conjunct Jupiter in Sagittarius. And trining Mars, that's the exact day that uh, Saturn is going to sextile Neptune as well, so there's a lot of energy in the sky, it's also going to conjunct Venus on that day, the moon, there's a lot of beautiful, satisfying, harmonious energy in the sky, does that mean that you necessarily are going to have an amazing day? No, but do utilize that energy to enjoy, indulge, love, relate, Take hold of these five senses and give thanks that you are alive. Right, Georgia? Right? Georgia told me before that this is a time that we need to innovate in our relationships. As to why, she said, well, the trine to Uranus and Venus is coming up next week. I said, you're right, Georgia. And uh, then she said that we should allow ourselves to actually, um, and, and I was very surprised by you saying that, Georgia, to actually try new things with our partners as well. I said, Georgia, how can I tell people that? And she said, well, you tell them that it would be pleasing for them and it would be pleasing for their partners as long as they don't do anything that they're not sure they want to do. And... It's a great time to give up fears and traumas. And I said, Georgia, you know what? It sounds like a good message, and I'm going to relate it to people. <clears throat> so, we're heading into February with a trying to Uranus in the sky on that Friday. The first, it's a great day to really allow yourself to innovate and be flexible. And don't look for stability, look for an upgrade, as I say in Uranian times. Saturday, the second, is a much more intense day. As we draw into the second, we'll feel that intensity growing. We, we have this intensity going on throughout the week with the square between Mars and Pluto that is exact on the second. And not only is that square in the sky, the moon is joining Saturn and squaring Mars, so intense, intense, we have to watch out from our reactions, we have to watch out from over drama, over drama in our life on these days, and especially on Saturday, and as I said, if you do have things you need to change in your life and upgrade, harness that energy and channel it towards change in your life, do it, do it, as Shivananda said, do it now, you know. <laughs> and we are heading into a Mercury Quintal Uranus, Venus Trine Uranus next week. So innovate in your relationships. Innovate about what you think about yourself, the way you make money, the way you relate to people, the way you create value, satisfaction, and self-value in your life. Summon, summon change into your life. Summon an upgrade. Summon magic. And on behalf of Georgia and myself, I want to thank you for flying with us. And I hope to see you on some of our uh, next flights. And I wish you all live long and prosper.